Next video. What it takes to be a taxidermist. Is this... Are we allowed... Do you think this would be TOS chat? I don't think it would be, right? Taxidermy is just a profession. I think you just have to be accepting that death is just part of life and that death doesn't have to be the end. I think taxidermists often feel like everyone else sees death as this... Are you blow drying a dead squirrel that you ripped out its organs and stuffed? Being a taxidermist has to be the last profession. I would rather I would rather shovel sh than be a taxidermist. Like no lie. Like I I would rather shovel sh than have to rip out an animal's inside, stuff it, and then like form it to like look cool. Like I don't get that. Sh like I've never. The only thing I would ever want in my entire life is a bear rug. But I wouldn't want to kill a bear. Give me a bear that died of old age. You know what I mean? Give me a bear that died at like 25, right? Don't kill it. Give me a dead bear. Like, I don't, I, you know, I would have a bear rug. That'd be pretty cool. But like when people have like a moose head just sticking out of their fucking wall, I'm like, bravo. Ah, uh, yeah, I shot that in 09. Killed a moose fucking, uh, what, 13 years ago? Why do you have it on your wall? Fucking eat it and then get rid of it. Thing and that it's the end and that we see it as an opportunity for a new beginning. So it's not the end. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, are you fucking, are you taking pictures of it? What are you gonna sell it? Who the fuck is gonna buy a taxidermied squirrel? What it takes to be a taxidermist. Taxidermy means the arrangement of skin. Basically, you're removing the skin from the specimen, and then you're cleaning um, and preparing the- I thought they ripped its insides out! They peel it like an orange? Oh, how do you do that? They peel it and then put it- Oh my god! I didn't know they did that! Ancient Egyptians were the precursory taxidermists. Although they didn't actually remove the skin, they embalmed bodies of animals using injections, spices, and essential But they didn't do taxidermy. They mummified cats because they were seen as a sign of good luck and things like that and things they wanted to bring into the underworld. Or not the underworld, the afterlife. Like, that's why Egyptians did that shit. You would get buried with your pets and stuff like that. Like, you, like I understand that. But, like, like now, now, we're, now I'm just gonna have one on my desk. Like, it's a fucking trophy. I'm just gonna have a fucking squirrel. It's not TOS. There's no gore. This is not TOS at all for the fucking idiots that are saying that. Half the people saying TOS don't even know what TOS stands for. They also used salts found in lakes in the lower region of Egypt to preserve skin, specifically borate of soda and sulfate of soda. Many, many centuries later, taxidermists like Amber use borate of soda. How much do taxidermists make? How much do taxidermists make? Is this a, is this a feasible career? Like how I don't think that's like a bustling pro yeah, 36 grand a year. I don't think that's like a bustling profession. Or, you know what I mean? Like I don't think I don't think taxidermists are just oh my god, I'm t I got so many orders for my dead cat. Like uh what the fuck? Borax, a white powder and tanning formula is to treat animal skins. It's a powder preservative that gets put on the inside of the skin before it gets mounted onto the mannequin. Would you get your pet taxidermied, chat? If you have a pet, when your pet dies, would you get your pet taxidermied? Never. Literally never. I feel like that's disrespectful. I'm gonna skin my, my dead dog and I'm gonna form it around a fucking mold and leave it in my house for eternity. Um, maybe, like, the only thing I can understand is when people, like, hunt and they get it taxidermied, like, a moose on a wall or something. But, like, even then, I feel like that's just weird. Can and this is going to keep it from decomposing. It's going to dry it out. It's going to keep any pest from being interested in it. Then when you have thicker-skinned animals, like a deer or fatty animals, like a bear or raccoon, uh, they need to go through a wet tanning process. So that would basically be um, using a liquid tan and submerging it in it for a number of days. Once How do you get into this profession? Are, are all taxidermist people that are like obsessed with like dead things? Because like, I don't, I don't see like, oh, I, I'm an accountant or something like, oh, I could see how you got into accounting. But like, how do you get into like peeling the skin off of animals and... <laughs> and putting it on uh, a mold. Those skins are tanned, they can be mounted, placed on a mannequin that is carefully sculpted to accurately portray the body of an animal. Mount your skin onto the mannequin, sew it up, blow dry it, you know, pose it, let it dry. 
Amber earned her taxidermy license after apprenticing under a professional. You have to apprentice under someone and get a license to taxidermy? What the fuck? Why do you need a license to fucking rip the skin off of animals? Actually, never mind. That was a stupid question. I could see why you need a license for that. Because if you just went around every day ripping the skin off of dead animals, you would kind of seem like a psychopath. Apprentice. And Amber intends to continue that tradition. I learn by doing it hands-on. So by experiencing it hands-on by someone who knows what they're talking about, I think that's really important. And I saw a niche there in the market of, you know, people who wanted to learn this trade. Amber's Brooklyn tax Was that $8? How much is a taxidermied animal? By, you know, people $150 for a fucking rat. 150 beans for a rat wearing a fucking hat. People who wanted to learn this. 180 for chipmunks trade. and Amber's 200 for a fucking squirrel. I would just go kill a squirrel in my backyard instead. You're out of your goddamn mind if you think I'm paying $200 for a dead squirrel. It's Brooklyn tax. <laughs> Taxidermy is one of two taxidermy studios in New York City. But she's not like traditional taxidermists who work with hunted game. Instead, she uses frozen feeder animals that would be used to feed reptiles, euthanized animals from the NYC Animal Care Center, deceased animals from zoo and wildlife preserves as well as pet stores, deceased house pets, and leftovers from Okay, butcher. so it's more humane. It's more humane. She's not getting, she's not taxidermying hunted animals. She's taxidermying things that would have died anyway. So it's a really symbiotic relationship. Butchers use the insides, and they would throw out the skins, the antlers, so otherwise they would go in the trash, so then I use those parts. So that would be you know, rabbits, quails, pheasants, ducks, goats, deer, anything you could eat. Amber's freezer is stuffed to the brim with rats, butterflies, and other deceased animals. But who's buying a dead rat? Who's like, you know what my house is missing? A rat with a hat. You know what? Oh, I, you know what I just watched? Ratatouille. You know, I might buy a taxidermied rat. I might, you know, I might spend $200 on a fucking rat with a, a genie hat on. No, you're out of your mind. A rat in the hat, like cat in the hat. These are innards. Oil from for the sub. The squirrel that was skinned today. So these go to um, my friend's pets who have pet snakes, or they go to the zoo um, across the street. Oh, she skins it herself. Animals she'll bring to life in a days long process that includes gutting, skinning, mounting, and everything in between. It takes a whole day to do one squirrel. Oh my god, no shit it costs $200. Spend a whole fucking day doing a goddamn squirrel? That sucks. How long does a fucking moose take? Probably like a week. Like many taxidermists, Amber entered the trade as a curious amateur. My friends who have worked for me from a long time ago, you're like, um... Give that back, put it in a bonfire. Oh, the class was 200, not the final product. I'm Googling how much a taxidermied, a taxidermied, uh, taxidermy squirrel price. Taxidermy squirrel on Etsy is still $180. The cowboy chipmunk. <laughs> Bro, someone made this. That is, did they put the soda to show how big it is? Like everybody knows how big a fucking chipmunk is. Or this shit. Why are they all fucking weird? What, what, is, what is this creativity shit? This motherfucker's ripping a stogie in a cowboy costume. He's $300. Why would I want this? <laughs> This is some shit your grandparents would buy you. This is like, this is like for Christmas and you're, you think your grandma got you like a gift card and you fucking open it and it's just a fucking taxidermy chipmunk. Oh, I heard you like cowboy movies. I thought you'd like this. Dude, there's so much taxidermy shit on Etsy. That's kind of creepy. I'll make you a new one. I guess I was just doing it as it's a hobby and it just kind of grew. Then, then I kept you know, buying dilapidated pieces or broken pieces or dirty pieces from a stoop sale or flea market, trying to figure out how to fix them, getting books and YouTube videos on how to do it. When am I playing The Walking Dead again? Wednesday. And went to school for it. There's a wealth of knowledge online. Manuals listing tools and how to use them, directions on how to skin and preserve mammals and birds, and instructions on how to make models and mannequins. And taxidermy has played a role in history. One look through a natural history museum and you'll see various exotic trophy hunted animals lining the floors. 
in the 1800s. Yeah, but the only time I see, like, taxidermy making sense is when they taxidermy like a fucking saber-toothed tiger. But even then, that's fake. They're just recreating it because their skin's probably not there anymore. Scientists use taxidermy to study- That's what I would have. A taxidermy saber-toothed tiger. I would have that in my fucking house. That would be sick. Taxidermy saber-tooth tiger price. How much do you think that's gonna run me up? You could get a skull of a saber-tooth tiger for $400. Oh, but it's artificial. Ew. I would want a real one. Animals outside of their geographical for the region. Get a mammoth. <laughs> an artificial mammoth just to take up an entire room. Natural history museums have pivoted away from this outdated practice. The Smithsonian in D.C., declined to replace its last full-time taxidermist, and instead opted to hire freelance taxidermists for exhibit repairs only. And maybe a mounted deer head on a wall comes to mind as well? Taxidermy and hunting have long gone hand in hand. In many cases, bigger mammals mounted from the neck up- But can I don't know if, if I shot a deer, I don't know if I would want to keep it. I feel like that would be like guilt. You know what I mean? Like if I shot a deer and ate it, whatever. If I shot a deer, ate it, taxidermied its head and it sat there forever. I would look, I would be like, it's looking at me. Like it's it, like Jesus. Be eaten. Artistic taxidermy took an eccentric route in the Victorian. You do it if it's a big deer. Yeah. Cause it's like a bragging, right? Like, oh, look at, look at that one I hit. That was a 310. With the introduction of anthropomorphic taxidermy. Picture cats dressed- Okay, see, I would buy that. I would buy that. I would buy that. With the introduction of anthropomorphic taxidermy. I would buy that. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. I would buy something like that. But it's not just the rat, but it's like the rat doing something uh, funny. So, like <laughs> Picture cats dressed for a wedding or magician mice. A lot of taxidermists today create anthropomorphic taxidermy. Yeah, because it's the only thing people would want to fucking of, buy. You know, possibilities. I'll never feel like I'm good enough. I'll never feel like I'm done learning. There's so many different animals and species and things to explore and try giving another a second life or sometimes a, a third rat life. with a mini rocket launcher. I would buy that. Life to animals, paying them like some homage, some honor to, you know, show them in a realistic way. See, that squirrel's ugly as fuck, though. All right, next. Would you turn your cat into a drone? Real stories. See, now this is just fucked up. Like, there's no, there's no, there's no scenario where I'm gonna say, yeah, my pet cat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna elongate his legs and shove him on my drone. His pussy cat had four propellers placed into its paws, and I wanted to know. What kind of man would do this to his own pet? One day, Orville got killed by a car here, just around the corner here. But I immediately knew that as soon as we had his body, that I was going to do something with him. Yeah, why not just, uh, I don't know, get a regular taxidermy if you're going to do anything or bury him, not put him on your drone? What if you crash the drone too? King for this. Make a point out of his untimely death. Oh my God. There he is. Orville Copter. And some taxidermist agreed to do that. This dude went to a taxidermist and said, hey, can you shove my cat's skin onto this drone? And they were like, yeah, sure thing. 300. With a local engineer called- To be fair, if I was a taxidermist already and someone wanted to pay me $300 to put their cat skin on a drone, I would probably do it. Like, <laughs> like you're already in the profession. Darian, it's just money at that point. Art had created the world's first remote-controlled flying dead cat. We're, we're made of stuff, and if you die, you, you, you end up as stuff, and you can do things to that oh stuff. Oh my god, why are you doing it to a rat? Just jam the pole through its body. That's not, e that's not even creative. You just pierced it. To, to, to keep it around. One day, he was just dead in the backyard. Oh, mother's milk. I wanted to make a cheese out of that. Breast milk? Yeah. As in your partner's breast milk? Or... Yeah. Okay, nah, this guy's just a freak. Nah, nah, he's got that. Nah, bro, he just said he's gonna make cheese out of his out of his girlfriend's best breast milk. Nah, bro, you got that shit just like cased in there. I killed. Oh. That's your girl. That's a lot of fucking breast milk. This milk. I wanted to make a cheese out of that. 
Breast milk? Yeah. As in your partner's breast milk? Or... Yeah. I remember when one of my grandmas died that I stood there at the bed and I saw the body of my, of my grandma, the woman that we all loved as kids. But I couldn't resist prodding her. It's like, what does it feel like? What? You saw your grandma dead and you just started poking her? When you're not here anymore, it was stiff and cold and I wanted to know. Was it difficult? Oh cutting? my god, not the other cat smelling the dead cat drone. Up your own pet. I have no problem taking the skin off a cat, even my own cat. After it's dead, it's not a cat anymore. It's just carbon. I mean, he's right at that, right? Like, once it's dead, it's not there anymore, but it's still kind of fucking weird. Like, because he just said, oh, once it's dead, I don't have a problem with it. Like, are you saying that you would skin a human too? And that's like, that's the next video. We're watching a Vsauce video on why don't we taxidermy people. But like, dude. In a shape. A cat shape. Bart invited me into his shed, where it became clear that his cat was not the first animal he'd been trying to make fly. And certainly... Wasn't oh my mark. god, an ostrich! Where did you get that? An ostrich drone? It's an ostrich. <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking massive. Is that its asshole Having that you just like every sealed with like paint? Ostrich farm in the Netherlands. Bart eventually got his hands on one that had died during the cold winter months. It's got a 50 kilo lift and it's 12,000 watts. But, like, why? Like, I can see- Why- I understand people liking drones, and I could get people being into taxidermy. But why combine the two? They're very unalike in every single way. Sailor for the sub. Where did he get the ostrich? It was a dead one that died in the winter or some shit. I was witnessing the world's most famous flightless bird taking to the skies. Is that why he did it? When I was a kid, I wanted to be an, an ostrich can't fly. He wanted to make an ostrich fly. Venter. I'm making things fly that I usually can't. And it's wonderful just to stand outside and all the, the parents with kids, they just gather around and they laugh and they make pictures and they talk about it for two days afterwards. I wouldn't laugh. I would say, I, would, I wouldn't laugh. I would walk up to him. I would say, can I interview you on why the fuck you think <laughs> you, you just wanted to do this out of nowhere? That's, that's a very, very good feeling. And I know the ostrich would have wanted it no other way. What Bart and Arian were doing was clearly bizarre. And to some people, even offensive. I don't think it's offensive, I just think it's odd. You were far from alone. Creations from dead creatures had become popular around the world. From expensive art to eBay auctions. Social media sites with hundreds of thousands of followers were dedicated to the- That is so fucking scary. Is that a fox? World's weirdest taxidermy. With fashion and interior design pushing the trend, I wondered if death had now become a legitimate business. Death? Okay, that was just a stupid fucking question. Death has always been a business. Funeral homes make a fucking shitload of money. If you live in, like, a decently non-wealthy sit like city, the dude that runs the funeral home in the city you live in is probably rich. Like, funeral home, funeral, everybody makes money off death. Death is a thing that people make money off of. Being cremated, uh, burials, uh, fucking funeral services cost a shitload of money, the caskets cost 10 grand. That's a normal thing. Taxidermy is just weirder because you're not burying someone, you're fucking stuffing them. Uh, why don't we taxidermy humans? This is an old Vsauce video. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I've never seen it. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. And when you up, die, what happens to your body? You're cremated. It can be buried, buried. or cremated. Or Would you rather be buried or cremated? Cremated, for those of the people that don't know, is when they burn you. Uh, and then they put your ashes in an urn. I might- I would maybe want to be cremated, in all honesty. Maybe cremated, and then you fucking- you throw my sh you throw my body somewhere. You know what I mean? Cook me into a cake, and then trick someone into eating me. That's fucked up. But I feel like that'd be a pretty funny way to go. You know what I mean? Something like that. You cremate me. You sprinkle my ashes somewhere. Something like that. I feel like buried. A lot of people say like, oh, buried because like it's fucked up to burn your body. But like at the end of the day, if you're buried, 
you're spending more money on being buried, and, and, uh, you're just gonna decompose anyway. Like, if you dug up a grave from, like, a hundred years ago, it's just a skeleton. Uh, that's, that has, like, it smells bad. Like, it's not you, you know what I mean? So, like, at that point, just cremate yourself, in my opinion. I don't know, maybe. I haven't decided whether or not I would want to be buried or cremated yet. <laughs> I feel like that's way to later down the line. Or donated to science. Cremate me and smoke me? Oh, nah. A permanent high five. So people could high five my actual skin forever. Well, it turns out to be quite complicated. So let's begin with an easier and more flexible solution cremation and ashes. 12 humans have walked on the moon, but 300 humans have been buried in outer space. With the right connections and budget, you can have a portion of your ashes launched into space. I'm doing that. Problem solved. I'm doing that. Problem solved. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I said I didn't know. Now I know. That's what I'm doing. Dude, they'll shoot me into outer space? That's fucking sick! That's fucking dope! They'll, they'll fucking shoot me into the sky? Oh, that's amazing. Put me in a firework. Yo! I can do that. If I don't have the money to send my ashes to space, put my ashes in a firework. Blow me the fuck up. The very first space burial occurred in 1997, when a rocket deposited the ashes of 24 people into orbit around Earth. In 1999, human remains were first buried on the moon. Wow. A lunar prospector probe dropped some scientific instruments and some of the cremated remains of Eugene Shoemaker, co-discoverer of the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. But the first human to have their remains leave our solar system will be Clyde Tombaugh, the guy who discovered Pluto. In 2006, some of his ashes were launched aboard the New Horizons probe, which will arrive near Pluto in 2015, take some recordings and pictures, and then continue on beyond our solar system. That's so sick. Though. You don't need to get all outer spacey to have fun with your ashes. Right here on Earth, there are companies that will take carbon from your remains and expose them to extreme heat and pressure long enough that you wind up with a diamond made out of you. It can be cut and polished. One woman e Why has no one told me all these cool ways to go? Well, I mean, you're not dying that way. That is sick. I could be launched into outer space. They can make me into a diamond, but then someone would buy me. You know, I wouldn't now because then what if like, see, you know what, you know, what, you know, what would piss me off if I paid for that and then like they gave it to like my, uh, like my family and then my family sold the diamond. That was me. That would piss me off. Melvin for the sub, Ganavi for the sub, Man for the sub, Omer three, uh, for the three. Even had it done with the ashes of Miaui, her cat. The point here is that you can be quite creative with cremated remains, but ashes don't look like you did when you were alive. So let's revisit- Yeah, but then when you bury someone, it don't matter anyway, because in a fucking year after you're buried, you're going to look gross. You're, you're, you're not going to be you. Taxidermy. The shapes- and combinations that animals have been taxidermied into. Okay, that's into. sick. That's sick. That is sick. What is that? A bird, a bird, turtle, squirrel? A bird squirrel? Are quite creative. For instance, an actual pig turned into an actual piggy bank. A bird light fixture. A goat that's also a bagpipe. Doves turned into shoes. And of course- fuck would wear that? A dove shoes? The guy who taxidermied his cat into a remote controlled quad. We just watched that. Taxidermy doesn't preserve every part of your body. It is taxidermy, the arrangement of skin, which is okay. I mean, taxidermy won't bother to preserve all of your internal organs, but your skin is your largest organ. Your skin comprises anywhere from 12 to 15% of your total body weight. Plus, it's an organ that people see and recognize you by. But here's one of the problems. When animals are taxidermied, their skin is removed and then mounted on a mannequin, a shape that resembles the animal, but is made of wood or wool and wire or wow. foam. That's fine for museums. But the use of a generic mannequin can lead to an animal that looks generic. 
all of the- Oh, you would look fucking weird! Because they wouldn't be able to make it look like you. That's why many taxidermists hesitate to taxidermy a person's beloved pet. Because in order to satisfy the client, an immense amount of specificity is required. Even more so if you were trying to recreate a person. So taxidermy may not be the best way to preserve yourself or your daddy or your mummy mummies. What about them? Well, let's go back to the 19th century and Jeremy Bentham. Dude, how Vsauce transitions is so weird. He'll just say, your dad, like, it's, it's like obviously awkward that he's saying that, and then it just transitions to something, mummies, and then he goes to something else. When he died, the This shit is boring as hell, then don't be here. Then don't be here. That's, oh, that is so awesome. That looks cool as fuck. This shit boring as hell. Talk about switching up much. Jesus fucking Christ. That looks so fucking cool. This shit's boring as fuck. Pick one. Is it boring or is it cool? Lucifer requested that his body be mummified as best as technology would allow and his body dressed up in clothes and displayed at the University College of London. It periodically still is, but the mummification didn't turn out perfectly, so his skeleton dressed up in clothes and stuffed. Is the that him? head wound up looking a bit too wrinkled and the color was off, and so a wax head was made. You can check out a 3D photograph of Jeremy Bentham online. And who could forget the dried out mummified middle finger of Galileo? We still have it and it's on display in Florence. It's a great- How do they have that? Galileo, it was so long ago. When was that motherfucker alive? The 1500s, he died in 1642. How did they get, how did they obtain his middle finger? Great thing to visit if you want a pivotal historical figure to flip you off. But we're looking for a way to preserve ourselves realistically as we appear while living. So let's take a look at embalming. Not all corpses are embalmed before they're buried, but embalming is a great technique for preserving a body, slowing down decomposition so it can stay above ground and be displayed a little bit longer. Now, if a body is embalmed it's for really, funerals. really well. It's for funeral viewings. Embalming is when they, they pump shit, they pump embalming fluid uh, in place of your blood. It slows down decomposition, and then they can display you for um, uh, viewing if, you're, if your wishes were to be viewed at the time of your death. It can be preserved longer than you might think. Abraham Lincoln was embalmed so well that even though his coffin has been moved, 17 times since he was buried, and the casket opened five times. On each of those occasions, including the most recent in 1901, people said, yep, yeah, still looks like Lincoln. Nah, take a picture. I want to see what he looks like. Take a pic. Well, the most recent in 1901. That was a while ago. I'm going to say, I'm going to say from then, he probably has uh, aged a bit. From then, that was a while ago. Um... Acorn for the sub, Seth for the thousand bits. I'm gonna embalm, okay. I'm gonna embalm, you mean taxidermy? Cause embalm, you wouldn't embalm, you're saying you're gonna embalm your genitals. That's not, you don't embalm them. You would embalm your whole body. On an even more extreme scale are the bodies of people like- How would Matt they take a picture of Abraham Lincoln? Uh, I don't know, how did they, how did they take a picture of them opening the casket, you fucking idiot? They had pictures before 1901. When was the first photograph taken? In like the 1800s. 1826. This is the first photo. This is one of the first photos, not the first photo. This is from, this is over, this is almost 200 years ago. They took this picture. They had pictures in 1826. You're acting, you're acting like they didn't have a camera until an iPhone. Now and linen, which continue to be on display to this day. They still have uh, Kim Jong-un's dad on display, don't they? On an even more extreme scale are the bodies of people like Mao and linen, which continue to be on display to this day. Wow. The bodies require special treatments multiple times a week. The exact techniques and embalming fluids used Oh, they treat it every week? To preserve linen Rampage for are the kept sub. secret, but they've kept him preserved for more than 80 years. Wait, he looks like that now? And they still got his body like that. That is insane. Well embalmed bodies can be displayed This mad being... boring? That's cool. Don't watch the video. Come back in five minutes. It'll be done. Buried in more positions than just lying down in a coffin. For instance, leaned up against a wall or riding a motorcycle. 
See, like, bro, you're really gonna embalm a body riding a motorcycle? But embalming doesn't last forever. And if you try to make it last forever, be prepared to spend a lot of money and time. One method that could be used on humans and has become popular with pets is similar to instant coffee, freeze drying. The process involves freezing the animal so that all of its water solidifies and then using a partial vacuum with a pressure so low that the solid water instantly turns into vapor and escapes away, leaving Oh, then it can't rot and it's just like fucking dry ass. It's like beef jerky. Your skin would be fucking weird looking now. It's the method used to prepare bodies for exhibits like Body Worlds. Essentially, plastination involves a specimen soaked in a volatile solvent and then placed in a in a low pressure environment. On God, go to Fortnite. Uh, on God, on God, go to Fortnite. And the volatile Fuck solvent off. leaves the specimen, and the empty space is filled with the polymer solution by using very long time, even at room temperature. But here's the crazy thing: it's free. You can quite easily donate your body to the Institute for Plastination. It counts as donating your body to science. But here's the thing, you won't necessarily have control over what's done with your body. Because at the end of the day, corpses are legally not property. No one owns a corpse. Because a corpse is not legally a piece of property, no one can just do whatever they want with it. Your options are severely limited. And even if you specifically have requested, say, that your body be taxidermied and all- Oh, you can only do one of three things with a dead body? Specifically have requested, say, that your body be taxidermied and all of your surviving kin agree and want it to happen, it's very unlikely that a mortuary would allow that to happen. Wow. And historically, the law sides with the mortuary. For example- Yeah, the law sides with mortuary, but say Elon Musk wanted to get taxidermied, that motherfucker would get taxidermied, no doubt. He's bypassing the fucking law on that one. Died, his body be skinned, his skin tanned into leather, and that leather used to bind a book of his writings. He wanted this to happen, as did his surviving widow. But the mortuary refused to do it, and the court sided with the mortuary. So even Damn. All right, we're done with that video, because he's just going on about other shit. Chad, if you had the option of getting taxidermied, would you? If it's if it's burial, cremation, or taxidermy, I don't know what position, what emote would I want to be in for the rest of eternity? Probably like a, like one of these. Like one of these. Like, like one of these.